Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this fixed beam using strain energy method. In this beam there are two loads. One point load 9 kN. It is acting at a distance of 2 meter from the point A. Then we have uniformly distributed load 4 kN per meter. It is acting for the whole span. Length of the beam is 6 meter. Now let us find the degree of static indeterminacy. In this beam, the number of unknown reactions and moments are 4. They are the moments MA and MB and the vertical reactions RA and RB. The available equilibrium equations are 2. The degree of static indeterminacy is equal to 4 minus 2. We will get 2. From these four, let us take MB and RB as redundant forces. To find the values of MB and RB, we are going to use strain energy formula. U is equal to 1 upon 2 EI into integration of M square dx. To find the moment M, we have to make sections in this beam. In this beam, there are two different parts, AC and CB. So, we have to make two sections, one in AC and one in CB. You can see that I have made two sections, one in CB and one in AC. I have made both of the sections at the distance of X from the point B. Since there are two different parts, we have to split this formula into two parts. The limit for the first integration is 0 to 4 and for the second integration is 4 to 6. Now we are going to find the moments M1 and M2. We are going to find the moments from the point B. In this case we are moving towards left hand side. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. First let us find M1 that is the moment about the first section. Up to this section, we have MB, the vertical reaction RB, and the uniformly distributed load 4. MB is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. RB is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is X. The UDL is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. For the UDL, we have to multiply with the distance and a distance by 2. We can eliminate 2. Here it will be 2. x into x, we will get x square. Now, let us find M2. That is the moment about the second section. Up to the section, we have the moment MB, the vertical reaction RB, and we have the UDL and the point load. MB is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. RB is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is X. The UDL is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. For the UDL, we have to multiply with the distance and the distance by 2. The point load is also acting in the clockwise direction so it is also negative. For the distance, we have to take this distance. This distance is x minus 4. 4 upon 2, we will get 2. x into x, we will get x square. We can multiply minus 9 with this. We will get these two terms. We know that in the point B, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be no slope and no deflection. Now, let us use Castellano's second theorem. When we partially differentiate the strain energy U with respect to RB, we will get the deflection in the point B. We know that the deflection in the point B is 0. Similarly, when we partially differentiate the strain energy with respect to the moment MB, we will get the slope in the point B. We know that in the point B, the slope is 0. Now let us take this and make an equation. Let us partially differentiate u with respect to rb. When we partially differentiate m1 square, 
we will get 2m1. We know that inside m1 we have rb. So we have to again partially differentiate m1 with respect to rb. When we partially differentiate m2 square, we will get 2m2. Inside m2 we have rb. So we have to again partially differentiate m2 with respect to rb. We can eliminate this two and this two. Also, we can eliminate this two and this two. 1 upon ei is common. We can take it outside and take on the other side. 0 into ei, we will get 0. Let us apply m1 and m2. Now, let us partially differentiate m1 with respect to rb. Here, there is no rb, so the differentiation is 0. In this term, we have rb. For rb, it will be 1. In this term, there is no rb, so it will be 0 here. 1 into x, we will get x. Now, let us partially differentiate m2 with respect to rb. Here, it will be 0. Here, here and here, it will be 0. Only in this term, we have rb. For rb, it will be 1. 1 into x, we will have x. Let us multiply this term with the x, we will get this. Also, we can multiply this term with the x, we will get this. Now, let us do integration. Using this formula, we can do the integration. After integrating and applying all of the limits, we will get this equation. Let us keep this equation as number 1. Now, let us partially differentiate u with respect to mb. When we partially differentiate m1 square, we will get 2m1. Inside m1, we have mb. So, again, we have to partially differentiate m1 with respect to mb. When we partially differentiate m2 square, we will get 2m2. Inside m2, we have mb. So, we have to again partially differentiate m2 with respect to mb. We can eliminate these four terms. Let us apply the values of m1 and m2. Let us partially differentiate m1 with respect to mb. Here and here it will be 0. For minus mb it will be minus 1. Now let us partially differentiate m2 with respect to mb. In these four terms there will be 0. When we differentiate minus mb it will be minus 1. Let us multiply this term with the minus 1, we will get this. And let us multiply this term with the minus 1, we will get this. Now we can do the integration. After integrating and applying the limits, we are getting this equation. Let us keep this equation as number 2. Now we have made two equations. We can take a calculator and solve these two equations. If you do not know how to solve two equations in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. I have used the calculator. For MB, I have got 16 kilonewton meter. And for RB, I have got 14.333 kilonewton. We have found the moment MB and the vertical reaction RB. Now, let us apply the rule sigma V is equal to 0. And to find Ra, Ra and Rb are acting upwards, so both of them are positive. Both of these loads are acting downwards, so both of them are negative. For the UDL, we have to multiply with the distance. Finally, for Ra, we are getting 18.667 kN. Now, let us take moment about A and find Ma. We are going to find the moment from the point B. In this case, we have to follow left hand side rule. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. MB is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. RB is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 6. The UDL is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. For the UDL, we have to multiply with the distance and a distance by 2. The point load is also acting in the clockwise direction so that it is also negative and the distance is 2. Let us assume that MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction 
so that it will be positive. After the calculation for MA, we will get a positive value. That means our assumption is correct. MA is acting in the anticlockwise direction. Now we are going to draw the shear force diagram. I am going to find the shear force values from the point A and towards the point B. In this case, I have to follow right hand side rule. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. Here you can see the calculations. Here you can see the shear force diagram. Now we are going to draw the bending moment diagram. The bending moment diagram can be drawn in two ways. The easiest method is superposition method. In this method, first we have to convert the fixed beam as a simply supported beam. You can see that I have converted the fixed beam into a simply supported beam. Now we have to draw the bending moment diagram for this simply supported beam. First let us find the reaction Ra. For that I am going to take moment about B. In this case I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. Ra is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 6. So 6 Ra. The load 9 kN is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative and the distance is 4. The UDL4 is acting in the anticlockwise direction so it is also negative. For the UDL we have to multiply with the distance and distance by 2. Finally for RA we are getting 18 kN. Now let us apply the rule sigma v is equal to 0 and find RB. Now let us find the bending moment in the point C from the point A. RA is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 2. The uniformly distributed load is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative. For the UDL we have to multiply with the distance and distance by 2. So for the bending moment at C we will get 28 kN meter. Now we can draw the bending moment diagram. We have uniformly distributed load for the full span. So the diagram will be in the parabolic shape. This diagram is called the free moment diagram and this diagram is positive. Now let us draw the end moment diagram. For MA we have got 20 and for MB we have got 16. We know that MA was acting in the anticlockwise direction and MB was acting in the clockwise direction. We have to see the direction of the arrows. Both of the arrows indicates upwards. So the diagram will be coming above this line. Since 20 is bigger than 16, we have to make this line little higher. Then we can combine both of the diagrams so that we will get the bending moment diagram. Where both of the diagrams are combined, we should not mark anything. We just keep the space empty. Wherever they are acting alone, we have to mark with the signs. 